Hi guys, most people know me as an ardent and tough critic of all the bad ideas that we have in Islam. So it might come as a surprise to some that just as I am tough when I analyze claims, I'm also honest and fair when it comes to acknowledging that I find some ideas in Islam as being impressive and positive. So there are things that I admire. I was prompted to do this video after listening to what Dr. Bill Warner had to say and instead of merely quoting him, I would like to add something I find of value in Islam. Because I strongly dislike the Anglo-American capitalist system the way it has developed over the last century, I find the, well, the Islamic concept of trade and its framework much more beneficial, more fair and realistic. In particular, the principle of every transaction requiring tangible goods behind it, i.e. not trading speculation or expectation, I find to be more down to earth and real. I don't even know if I should be sorry, but I don't care for the schmuck who buys a new Ferrari because thousands have lost their life savings. And normally I don't talk about Muslims in general, but I want to take the opportunity to point out that most Muslims in general are better than their God and simply lead normal lives and contribute to the overall well-being of others. They don't care about all the negative notions of this political ideology Islam and have the tolerance to let others lead their lives without wanting to convert or kill them. I like that. And now over to the speech I mentioned, written by Dr. Bill Warner in 2017, his point of view. And here's what he said about what he admires about Islam. My point of view. I stand, I stand for open, open questioning, questioning of authorities. I stand for honesty, fact-based reasoning and debate. I oppose all censorship, including hate speech laws, name-calling and insults. I want to talk to you about what I admire about Islam. Now, this may seem like a strange topic for me because I'm a notorious critic of Islam, but studying it I understand its strengths and I think we need to learn from those strengths. Don't denigrate your enemy if he's strong enough to oppose you. So let's start with family. Family is the basis of Islamic society and not really the individual. And this has an overwhelming advantage. Why it provides for a next generation where individuals don't necessarily provide that. I'm an old man and one of the things I like about Islam is it teaches respect for your elders. Call it a personal whim, but I like that. Then Islam has a concept of civilizational war that beats all other doctrines of war. It certainly beats our doctrine of war which usually just considers it kinetic warfare, that is bullets and bombs. Now if you want to oppose us on the battlefield, we do great. But unfortunately, this war is being fought in ways other than bullets and bombs. And Islam has an ability to work in groups. This is wonderful because they get more done. We, on the other hand, have an individual and we don't get as much work done. Muslims meet frequently, locally and across the nation. Why to plan their civilizational war? You see, they're here to win. They believe in long-range strategic planning. The Muslim Brotherhood Explanatory Memo is a work of extraordinary genius. It covers generational planning and a breadth of war that we don't even know how to comprehend. Take this as an example. General Stanley McChrystal's battle plans in Afghanistan. There's no mention of Islam, no mention of Jihad and no mention of Muslims. Well, good luck making that work in a country like Afghanistan. Now, let's talk about textbooks. They are also used in a civilizational war. In the seventh grade in Tennessee, you will learn that Islam was the golden age, was the high point of civilization, that women were given their rights first by Islam. The first constitution came from Islam and that Islam cares for the Jew and the Christian and takes care of them. These things are at best only half true, but the little Tennesseans will grow up believing this. Then 
we have Sharia finance, a brilliant plan where money is taken from our civilization and put into the civilization of war to tear us down. If you're an individual and want to do what I do, good luck on getting any money. But if you're a Muslim and want to do what I do, money will be there. If I were a Muslim and decided to run for Congress of the United States, I would have all the money I needed. I sat in a mosque in Southern California and watched as $20,000 was raised from about 50 people. And it was for the stated purpose of civilizational war, lawfare. Yes, they were generous. They were quite generous. You see, Muslims want to win and we just want to tie. We want everybody to like us. Go to a bridge building event inside the religious community and you'll discover that the rabbis and the Christian clergy, they're just there to be nice and pleasant, whereas the imam is there to score points. He knows Christianity and he knows Judaism and he uses that knowledge well. They teach their young dawah, that is, how to preach the gospel of Islam to the young Christians and others they meet in school. I don't know of any church that prepares its young people to try to convert Muslims. There's no opposition within the church or the synagogue to what I call love jihad, which is when Muslims seek out Christians and Jewish girls to marry them and then have Muslim babies. Muslims have courage and optimism. I gave a talk to 400 people in Chattanooga and one Muslim showed up to try to ask me difficult questions. Find a kafra who will attend a meeting of 400 Muslims to try and ask some tough questions. Muslims know their history of victory and losses. Here in Nashville, Tennessee, the buckle of the Bible Belt, you won't be able to find a minister who knows that Turkey used to be a Christian nation. They just don't care because the university they went to didn't teach the history of conquest. They didn't teach the status of the dhimmi. That's why they're winning. They've proudly proclaimed at a Muslim student association meeting at Vanderbilt University that everything was in place and that Islam had won in Nashville, Tennessee, because even the fundamentalist churches consider Islam to be a valid religion. And now look at the refugees who come in. Vastly overproportioned, these are Muslims. What about the Christian refugees? Nah, mostly Muslim. We need to study the winners so that we don't become the losers. We need to know the enemy and Islam is the enemy of our civilization. It has some good things and we need to learn them so that we can be winners too. Thank you.